What's going on, Cage Nation? Your boy Kendrick Gray, the Dreadlock Boy, here back with another quick movie review. Here we're going to be talking about Project Power. I was finally able to, well, I was actually able to force myself to watch it last night since it's been out for a couple of weeks now. I figured there's nothing really else to watch, so I figured let me just give this thing a shot. So we checked it out. It stars Jamie Foxx, Joseph Gordon Levin, newcomer Dominic Fishback, Machine Gun Kelly for some reason. I guess he has a lot of free time to do movies. Uh, Rodrigo Santoro and Courtney B. Vance. Uh, the basic premise of the movie centers around a world where superpowers are activated via a pill. Via a pill that is called simply just power. Individuals who take this pill are able to access a specific superpower that is compatible to them. The only catch is, is that it's completely random. And you only have that power for five minutes. Um, uh, Jamie Foxx plays a character by the name of Art, who is also known as the Major, who is on a mission to shut down the people who are creating this thing because they are using his daughter as the source for accessing the powers from these pills. Um, Joseph Gordon plays a detective who plays a cop who occasionally uses the pill to gain the power of impenetrable skin. Um... Courtney B. Vance plays the police captain who is pretty much on the take. And of course, newcomer Dominic Fishback plays Robin. She is a small time dealer of the drug power, but she's only doing it as a way of, you know, making ends meet so she can take care of her mother's medical bills. I didn't mind this movie too much. I actually thought it was pretty good. I know a lot of people were making comparisons to this to like X Men and stuff. I'm going to be honest with you, I got more power. No, not even power. I got more Push vibes from this movie. Um, if you guys remember Push, Push was that movie with um, Chris Evans, Jaiman Hazu, and Dakota Fanning where people had a certain type of power in that universe. You know, you were either a pusher, you were either like a telepath or something like that. It's, it's been a minute since I've seen Push, but, power, but Project Power kind of gave me vibes of Push. Um, I remember the villain, Jaiman Hansu played, um, he was a villain where he was like kidnapping people with powers, and he was basically going to create an army of them by, I believe, extracting what their powers were or something like that, multiplying it, something to that effect. Again, it's been a minute since I've seen Push, so that's kind of the premise that I got, but then, but of course, the premise for Project Power, of course, is again, Jamie Foxx's daughter. She has powers, and all of those powers, again, spoiler alert, those powers came from the fact that he was experimented on in the military, which kind of leads me to believe that's probably something that happens in real life. I don't really know. The acting in it, I actually thought was pretty solid. I know there's a lot of mixed reviews that people were giving this movie. Some people either really liked it, and some people thought it was kind of mediocre. It was okay. Like, it's definitely a movie that I probably don't have to watch again. I pretty much got the gist of the whole story just from that one viewing. But other than that, I thought it was pretty all right. I thought Jamie Foxx did a pretty good job. I thought Joseph Gordon-Levin did a pretty good job. Again, Dominique Fishback, I think she has a very good career ahead of her. She actually does a really good job playing the role of Robin, who is kind of like a street... She's kind of a street-smart character, but she's only doing this bad thing for a specific reason. She, of course, is a little bit way in of her, went way in over her head, but she does have a head on her shoulders i think she plays that very well she plays a character who's kind of a mix of both worlds kind of being street smart kind of being book smart but you know in the way she says she doesn't really give a damn about school she can rap she can, she can apparently rap, and i ain't gonna lie her bars was kind of fire her bars were pretty tight the effects in this movie were actually really dope um machine gun kelly plays a character named newt and when he takes the pill he actually becomes a pyrokinetic well, I can't really call him a power connect. He just becomes engulfed in flames. So he becomes almost like a human torch. But again, like I said, those powers only last for five minutes. He eventually, of course, um, overdoses. He takes too many pills and he becomes engulfed in his own flames. Or he explodes, basically. And that's what I thought was interesting about the premise of this. Is that the fact that when you take this pill, you don't know what power you're going to have. You can have super strength. You can have you know regenerative properties you can there's one there's one character in the movie who would who develop 
cryokinesis. He was able to like generate, you know, ice powers. They're not, they're not like clear cut dry powers like they are in like X Men or like you know um, heroes and things like that. Their powers only in the sense that it's like it's almost it's not even like powers so to speak. They're almost like genetic mutations of your body. So basically, and I, thought, I like what they did with the movie. They basically, you know, explained that like animals can do this. Certain animals can like, you know, do this to their bodies to adapt. You know, lizards, certain types of lizards can regenerate limbs. You know, certain types of animals can break limbs, break bones in their body to use them as weapons. You know, things like that. So it was kind of that approach to the movie, which I thought was interesting because... You know, a lot for a long time, people were asking, like, people were talking a like, You know, humans haven't, you know, evolved within the last couple of centuries or so. Like, animals continue to evolve every day, but humans do not. And it's interesting that we don't. So, power, Project Power is essentially asking a question: What if we can? What if we could do something that would help us adapt to, or help us evolve into the next stage of human evolution? Something like that. Again, it's not like X-Men where those people were born with powers. You know, they were born with abilities, so their bodies have adapted to it. Like, again, for instance, Machine Gun Kelly's character of Newt took too many pills, he ended up exploding. But even before that, again, his power to have his body engulfed in flames, it left him scarred when the power was over with. You know, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, when he takes the pill, he gains impenetrable skin. But after that's over, he's still left with some of the markings. Like he takes a gunshot to the head right before his time runs out, but it ends up blowing a blood vessel in his eye. Um, you know, again, the girl who eventually turned into ice, she eventually got so consumed by her ice ability that she ended up freezing from the inside. So it's like. So it was almost best case scenario, but worst case scenario in terms of superpowers. Again, you don't know you can you don't know if you can fly. You don't know if you have stupid strength. There are some instances where the pill would just simply make you explode, and that happens in the movie. Someone takes the pill and they just end up exploding. So it's a gamble. You don't know what you're gonna get. And I thought that was very interesting. I don't necessarily think they need to do like a continuation of the story. There doesn't need to be a continuation. There doesn't even need to be a prequel. This is actually a pretty much one and done movie. Um, if they ever decide to explore the universe of Project Power, they could probably go to, like, other cities. This movie takes place in New Orleans, so they could probably go to other cities, other states, and see how it affects them there, because the whole premise is that this is pretty much a drug ring. But Project Power, Project Power is a drug that's being sold on the streets, and it's also being sold to, like, drug cartels all over the place. And the idea was that they were hoping... Or at least um, Rodrigo Santoro's character of Biggie was hoping to work, continue to work on the pill to the to a point where it would become sustainable and people wouldn't need to take the pill anymore. They take it one time and they've had these powers forever. That's where Jamie Foxx's daughter in the movie comes into play because again, the power derives from her. She was born with abilities. They never really go into detail what her abilities are, but she was born with them, so she's she's patient zero essentially. But I think overall, this was a nice short little movie. You know, again, they don't need to do a sequel. I don't even think they need to do a prequel. If anything, if they turned this into a series, I think that would it might work, possibly. But I'd have to give this movie, uh, I'll give it a 7 out of 10. It's not bad. I, th I thought it was pretty good. The concept was actually pretty interesting. Um, I probably never need to watch it again because I got the gist of it. But if you want to give it a shot... You know, go ahead and watch it and, um, you know, make your determination from there, whether you like the movie or not. In any case, post your comments in the comment section below. Let me know what you thought about Project Power. If you've already seen it, let me know what you liked about it. Let me know what you didn't like about it. We could get a discussion going in the comment section and we can just take it from there. If you enjoyed my review, hit the thumbs up. If you didn't, hit the thumbs down. Share this video with all your friends. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you enjoy what you see. I'm out. Peace.